the special teams guy, but I'm actually going to ask you about your position group. What was it like seeing J-Rob and Kando just have kind of a coming out for them in the 2020 season on Saturday? Yeah, no, hey, Chris. Uh, no, it was, it was excellent because, uh, you know, both their cases, you, you can see progress, you know, not just throughout the course of the last week, but really throughout the course of the last several weeks in terms of just, you know, practice, being more productive, uh, better work ethic. Uh, and when you see that happen in practice, you obviously want to reap those uh, rewards on, on Saturday. And I thought um, those guys had earned the right to, to play well uh, with the way they, they practiced during the week. And, and uh, I was really excited for them that they were able to go out there and be as productive as they were and uh, impact the, way, the game the way that they did. Hey, I was curious how the conversations go with you and Coach Norvell uh, going into a week um, in terms of when to be aggressive. Um, is it usually more you and your um, staff have seen something that you want to bring to his attention or does he come to you and say, hey, we may need some juice in the kicking game or kind of how do those conversations go? So uh, Coach Norvell and myself and, and the staff, uh, we meet you know every day on, on special teams. Um, you know, he and I, uh, with my uh, special teams quality control coach, meet on Mondays and kind of go through the game plan. Um, and then as the week goes on, as, as we're all getting a better feel for our opponent and the game plan and how it's going to play out, um, a lot of different thoughts are discussed. And then in our, usually in our, in our uh, Saturday morning staff meeting, it's kind of, you know, we, you know, coach lays out kind of how he sees things going and um, when are times that we want to be aggressive and when are some times that maybe we wouldn't want to be and, uh, you know, so we work together on, on timing of how we're going to go out and play the game in terms of how aggressive or non-aggressive we're going to be in, in the kick game. Um, but that's always a work in progress through the course of the week. Coach, you said last week that when you're teaching, you can't really just focus on the results. But this week, you got the results. So how do you continue in that progress? Well, so that's a great question. So but I think when the key is – to go back and point at the things that happened to practice last week that led to playing well on game day. And then being able to, to make the point like, hey, listen, we were able to get the results that we wanted because of the preparation that went into it. And let's replicate that again to the best of our ability and make improvements on it as we go into to this next week. And you know, I said this probably the very first week that I was in here, uh, and, and I believe it's my core, we should be a better football team in November than we were in September. And if we continue to, to make daily progress, which turns into weekly progress, um, you will see that. And to me, that's the mark of a team that has bought in. And it's also the mark of a team that, that takes pride in, in really working through that process. Hey, Coach, uh, to go back to the defensive line, just talk about how important the pass was, was to your key, to, you know, your third down success on Saturday. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, you know, one of the things that, that uh, helps you have success on those third downs, I think there were two of 14 on, on or two of 14 or 15 on those, uh, on those uh, transitional uh, downs is being able to apply pressure to the quarterback. And we were able to get a lot of it out of the four-man pass rush. Uh, so, you know, I thought whether it was uh, Kando or J-Rob off the edge or some good push inside uh, that, that we were able to, to create that really for the first time uh, consistently probably all year. And I think that made a huge difference. Coach, following up on that statement you just made, it did look like it was a, a, an effort. Uh, it was effort. Um, even chasing the ball after the play. What – what happened? What caused them to uh, play with that kind of effort this week? Well, you know, I thought I thought the effort has uh, improved as we've gone, and you know, part of part of creating, you know, the, from an effort standpoint, is establishing the standard and then showing guys when we're living up to that standard, and, and then when we're not. And uh, I think the longer we're together, the longer. Uh, you know, the, the, we have an opportunity to kind of really clearly define what the expectations of playing on this football team are and part of this defense, the closer we're getting to uh, what we're looking for. And um, I thought, I think as the weeks have gone on, 
I've seen improvement, especially over the last two two weeks, and uh, we need to continue building upon that uh, as we as we move into the back half of our schedule. Hey JP, I had a question on on both the uh, both the block punts. On the first one, they mentioned in the TV broadcast that that you had seen something in the week that that led you to believe you can get pressure. I guess what did you see? And then on the second one on Marv's, was that schemed up perfectly as well, or was that just a matter of him making making a play with with sheer effort? Uh, no, so great question. So on the first one, uh, we did feel like going into the game that we were going to be able to block them based on what they were doing schematically. Um, we felt like we could eat up their shield and then catch it off the backside, um, which is exactly kind of how it played out. Um, we forced their shield kind of to be occupied with how we attacked it, and then. Uh, Ja'Kai did a great job coming off the backside and getting it done. Uh, in terms of Marvin's, uh, Marvin's was sheer effort. We asked those guys to play hard when we're in punt save, uh, that they can be aggressive and they can go attack. And if you have an opportunity to, to make a play, then, then obviously go ahead and make it. Be smart in that situation because we want to make sure we're getting the ball back. Um, but Marvin's was a, was a great effort play. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of who he, he has been on the special team units when he's been out there. Hey, Coach, I want to ask you uh, about a couple of the, the misses you guys had in the field goal game uh, with Ryan. Was, it, was there something technically going on that you guys can fix? And I guess the other question would be, will you guys be reopening that competition this week? Uh, you know, to, to the first point, uh, there was a couple technical things I think that can be fixed. Um, and two, in terms of the competition, it, in my mind, it's always competition. Uh, you know, every rep that they take, whether it's a uh, a live rep in a full team setting or it's a a, uh, a practice rep when they're working on their own, every one of them is charted. Everybody, every one of them is calculated uh, at the end of the day and then again at the end of the week. Um, so I'm super aware of who's kind of trending in which direction. And, uh, you know, we compete at every position on our football team. Uh, nobody is, is a starter for life. And, uh, you know, so we'll continue that and uh, see how that continues progresses as we goes. Coach, is there like a, a residual effect that you guys hope to have with, with the way your special teams are playing in terms of the teams you're facing maybe realize just they're going to have to invest more time in their practice working on their special teams and then that'll kind of knock a leg loose from them on other aspects of their preparation? Well, I mean, you know, obviously we can't control how other people prepare for us, but uh, we do want to be known as, as a team that affects the game and, and everything we do from a special teams perspective. And we're going to be a multi-formation, a multi-shift, a very aggressive uh, special teams unit uh, to make people work, uh, to make people respect the idea that, um, you know, you don't know what you're getting, whether it's in the punk block game or the, the punt return game or in our punt game or very multiple formation, our kickoff return game. Um, you know, so we want people to have to, to work hard to, to prepare for us. Um, but, you know, really the, the biggest thing is we're looking for ways to give us an advantage in every game and uh, to create some momentum and then also create plays. I thought um, the way that that Saturday night played out could have been better for us uh, blocking the first punt, setting up that first score, because every time something like that happens, you create buy-in within your football team that what we're preaching in terms of the importance of special teams play is real. And it's not just something we keep talking about, but there's actual tangible results that all the players can see and they understand the impact that they can have uh, with our special team units. On Josh's interception, uh, it was that, I guess, by design or is that him reacting just naturally to to seeing the running back flare out? A little bit of both. Um, they had run that play a couple times earlier in the game. Uh, each time they got in kind of what I think Josh described in his post-game um, interview that this, you know, also, but they were in what we call a four by one set with the back off set to a three by one formation. And, uh, you know, he recognized the formation, saw the condensed splits of, of the wide outs and, and kind of had a good feel for what was coming. So as he started on his pass rush, he kind of just redirected and, and was going to play the screen. And uh, we were fortunate that they threw it right to him. And it was a good read, a good play, good finish. I mean, you know, and those are the things when you have high IQ guys on the field like Josh's 
um, you have a chance to, to have those things happen because he, he recognized what was going on around him and then he made a great play. I mean, he made a tremendous play. So, um, you know, the, but those are, that's, that's the, uh, I guess, some of the dividends that get paid when, when you're locked in and in tune to what's going on around you. Hey, Coach, uh, four years ago, you were on the opposite sideline of this game. That one was equally as exciting. Uh, you were on the winning end on both of those. But I guess what is, what is that like as a coach, just kind of being in that situation? Do you, do you compartmentalize it, not think about it, or do you kind of like start thinking back to what happened four years ago? Uh, you know, I, I have, you know, super fond memories of, of my time at, at Carolina. and That game in particular was, was a game that, that I'll always remember. Um, this game that we had this past weekend, though, is one that I'll, I'll never forget in my career. Um, it was emotional for a lot of reasons. I have a high level of respect for a lot of guys and a lot of players on that opposing sideline. Um, and to be able to go and, and, and get that win in the way that we did um, was was very gratifying for me and for our team. And, and, and in so many ways, uh, those, those both were memorable games, but – I'm going to go down, and I think I'll always remember the one this past Saturday as uh, my most fond memory of the two. All right, thank you, Coach.